This is ABC 7 News at 6. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Peter Dubois. And I'm Beth Jones. First tonight, there is new information regarding two women that have been missing since earlier this week. 51-year-old Kimberly Pushard and 50-year-old Angela Bussell are both from Topsom, but police say the two women could be in the area because they may have confused Topsom and Tops Field. They were last seen in Springfield at an Irving gas station on Route 6 on Wednesday at around, at around 10 a.m. According to police, both women have intellectual disabilities. They may be trying to return home by way of the interstate or Route 1. Pushard is driving a red Jeep Compass with main registration 1960 VC. She's a white female, 5 feet 5 inches tall, weighing 164 pounds, with brown hair and hazel eyes. Angela Bussell is a passenger in the vehicle. She's a white female, around 5 feet 8 inches tall, weighing 213 pounds, with brown hair and blue eyes. If anyone makes contact with them, you are asked to call the Topsom Police Department at 443-9711. A fire at a gas station in Waterville this morning could be seen for miles. Officials say at approximately 515 this morning, both Waterville and Oakland fire departments were dispatched to the Dead River Shell Station at 500 Kennedy Memorial Drive in Waterville. When they arrived, crews arrived. Crews found a propane filling station was on fire with flames being fueled by a tank containing more than 1,200 gallons of propane. Crews put out the fire in about an hour. Waterville Fire Department Deputy Chief Jason Frost says it was straightforward due to the specific nature of the fuel. It's not the tank on fire, it's the gas that's coming out of it. Uh, so they're actually designed to do that so that they won't uh, start to boil inside and then explode. LP gas is actually a clean gas, so as it's venting off, you actually want it to burn so that it doesn't actually just disperse and go into a building or go into low-lying areas. Fire crews used water to keep the tank cool and prevent a possible rupture, monitoring the temperature with thermal imaging cameras. Dead River technicians also arrived on scene and assisted fire crews with shutting off the propane supply from the tank. Officials say a tractor used for plowing struck a fill hose, which caused the propane leak, and it is presumed electrical wires then ignited the leaking propane. The fire is considered accidental. No injuries were reported. Maine State Police are investigating a double homicide in Poland. On Tuesday, Androscoggin County Sheriff's deputies discovered the bodies of two deceased males at a home in Poland. State Police spokesperson Shannon Moss says the Office of the Chief Medical Examiner identified them as 21-year-old Shoeb Mohamed Adan of Springfield, Massachusetts, and 16-year-old Mohamed Aden of Lewiston, Maine. The chief medical examiner ruled their deaths as homicides. The state police major crimes unit and the sheriff's office have been conducting interviews and following leads in Maine and Massachusetts. Anyone with information is asked to contact the Androscoggin County Sheriff's Office at 753-2599. Well, last week, during a hearing on the health care workforce crisis, Senator Susan Collins presented a picture of just how poorly Maine colleges and universities are equipped to teach new nursing applicants. Collins said that in 2021, 92,000 applications were turned away, with faculty shortages cited as a top reason why. And the University of Maine this year had more than 1,200 applications for only 80 slots. Our Emma Smith had a chance to talk to the senator about this issue. So here we have a situation where we have a dramatic shortage of nurses. We have people who want to become nurses, right. but we can't accommodate them because our universities and colleges can't attract enough people to be nursing professors. And that's the problem we need to focus on. A lot of people are under the misconception that people don't want to go into nursing anymore. That's not the issue, thank <laughs> goodness. Yeah. There are so many people who are willing to go into the field of nursing who want to help care for people, but we simply don't have the professors to educate them. Well, Senator Collins says more collaboration between universities and hospitals with a working and teaching mix would help get more educators into the classroom. She also expressed some ideas about expanding debt forgiveness for nursing professors that would agree to teach for five years. 
Earlier this week, Governor Janet Mills announced she's joined the newly launched Reproductive Freedom Alliance. Mills joins 19 other other fellow governors across the country who are invested in securing abortion protections by collectively expanding state reproductive rights. Planned Parenthood reports 12 states have eliminated abortion access, including states like Texas, which exercise trigger laws, making abortion illegal immediately following the overturning of Roe v. Wade. A spokesperson for Planned Parenthood of Northern New England says, though the establishment of the alliance is reassuring, more must still be done. It is important that um, our elected leaders are coming together to try and find solutions. One in three women are living in a place where they can't legally access or exercise their reproductive rights and freedom. And they are having to navigate extreme hurdles to try and get access to abortion care. Last month, Governor Mills, Senate President Troy Jackson and House Speaker Rachel Talbot Ross announced legislation to ensure protections to main medical providers that offer abortion care. In other news tonight, a concerned Mainer is using his expertise to share some important safety tips when it comes to a popular winter activity. Our David Ledford explains. We've had too many deaths in the last few days, so I'd like to see that stop right now. While it may be one of the most popular winter activities in Maine, experts say that snowmobiling can be incredibly dangerous if you go in unprepared. Al Sweat, president of the Maine Snowmobile Association, says that everyone should carry a first aid kit and a survival kit as the bare minimum when they hit Maine's trails. However, he says that checking your gear before you head out is just as important. I'm, lo I'm looking also for anything broken, a broken bushing, uh, a cracked arm, similar to this, might be broken. Make sure my carbides, I'll flip the ski up, check my carbides. Uh, just look for any broken parts that will make your day miserable on the trail. Sweat also recommends that people bring a flashlight, a GPS, and a reliable form of communication, like a satellite phone. Sweat says that 88,000 snowmobiles were registered in Maine last year, and he expects similar numbers this season which is why he stressed the importance of cautious and courteous driving. When you go out on your sled, be prepared. Uh, slow down, go around the corners, easy. Uh, you know, NASCAR race drivers. It saddens me when anybody calls me and says somebody's died on a sled. You know, they're supposed to be on a 14,000 miles of trail having fun out with the family and friends and having a good time. And, and then when people get hurt, it really strikes home hard. Above all, Sweat says that one of the most important safety tips he can give is to simply wear a helmet. In Waterville, David Ledford, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Certainly some important advice there. And to learn more about safe snowmobiling, you can visit MainSnowmobileAssociation.com. A well, close call similar to the one Waterville resident Lisa Evans experienced prompted a local representative to propose a bill he says could keep motorists safe. Our Matthew Jaroncic has more. Next thing we know, boom. And um, a large chunk of ice came and hit the entire windshield. Did not... Um... Lisa Evans recounts the close call she had a year ago when a piece of ice flew off a truck and shattered the windshield of her Toyota Prius while driving to Boston. And I had to scooch down. The windshield was completely shattered and um, was able to get off the exit. Fortunately, no one was hurt, but events like this are what inspired Waterville Representative Bruce White to draft legislation that he feels would prevent dangerous incidents. Every winter we hear about these many times um, windshields getting smashed by ice falling off from cars or trucks in front of them. And so this has been an issue and it continues to be. Under current law, Mainers must remove snow, ice, or any other substances from the windshield, driver's side, and passenger side windows, but not on vehicle roofs. If passed, the law would allow police officers to fine drivers $150 to $500 for not cleaning off snow that accumulated on top of cars. Representative White and other lawmakers have tried to pass this bill a few times but have been unsuccessful. What makes this bill different is the proposed 48-hour grace period after a storm to clean vehicle roofs of snow. We want to bring awareness. Maybe somebody will take that extra few minutes that it takes to clean off their car, truck, or vehicle to um, hopefully prevent a um, tragic accident. A public meeting for the bill will be held Thursday, March 2nd at 1 p.m. In Waterville, Matthew Jaroncic reporting for ABC7 and Fox 22 News.
And with plenty of snow and ice to go around lately, a very timely reminder and yeah. piece of legislation for that matter. Absolutely. Yeah, I think we've all been in a situation where, you know, we've been on the highway mm -hmm. or been spent behind other drivers and yeah. seen that and maybe wanted to avoid that. It, it definitely yeah. can cause extra danger in an already dangerous environment. It's especially scary, too. I mean, when you're just behind another vehicle, you sort of have a decent view of the car. You can kind of see where how much snow do they have or not have. Is it flying right. off? When you're behind those large trucks, oftentimes it happens in the blink of an eye and you have seconds to react. Yeah. So obviously, you know, you increase your following distance if you can, right. but still those chunks of ice come flying at you. Yeah, and glad she was okay in that situation. Indeed, that could have turned out a lot worse. Mm -hmm. Alrighty, well, of course, we have been having some winter weather lately. Yes. While the snow may be done, the cold is not. So yep. let's turn things over and take a first <laughs> look at our forecast. Hey, Beth and Peter, we made it. The weekend's here. Your first weather is brought to you by Goose River Farm Meat Store, and here we go. So temperatures today felt a bit cold, right? A gusty northwest wind, air temperatures in the teens, but warmer temperatures are on the way as soon as tomorrow afternoon. Until then, though, here are the advisories. In here is a gale warning for winds out there and waves out there approaching 8 to 10 feet. This is a wind chill advisory to the west of us for feel like temperatures tonight are approaching 25 degrees below zero there. The rest of us uh, feel like temperatures near 10 below. Lots of clouds out there earlier today. They're kind of breaking up now. They'll be back again tonight after our snow showers this morning. And we are in for a nice day tomorrow, followed by another system getting in here <laughs> later on Sunday with some more snow showers. Our forecast at night, though, is mostly clear skies, so partly cloudy skies, with low temperatures down near zero. Your full forecast is coming up. Beth and Peter. And that is a chilly overnight right there. Yes, pretty chilly indeed. Indeed. All right. Well, coming up on ABC 7 News at 6, we'll take you to Herman Mountain, where crews have had to work a little harder to keep up with this winter's weather. And today marks the one-year anniversary of Putin's invasion of Ukraine. We'll hear from an anonymous Russian about their perspective. Those stories and much more as ABC 7 News at 6 continues. Salida's Rug Cleaners in Bangor is the best and only spot you should go to for your rug cleanings. Serving Maine for more than 70 years, we care about your rugs. Clean rugs last longer, and our family takes pride in being the professionals that you can trust. Our cleaning process consists of soaking your rug in a bath, shampooing, rinsing, and drying in a humidity-controlled dry room, making sure no detail is overlooked. Need a repair? We fully service every type of rug for you. Salida's Rug Cleaners. We care about your rugs. It's your journey. Own every mile in the all-electric Hyundai Ioniq 5, 2023 Motor Trend SUV of the Year. Now, lease an Ioniq 5 for $539 a month, including a 7,500 EV lease bonus. Hurry in. Mossy Ledge Spirits is a true hidden gem in Aetna. Located just three miles off I-95, exit 167, we are home to tastings, tours, cocktails, to-go drinks, bottles, live music, minis, and priceless memories. You're sure to fall in love with our handcrafted, unique, and deliciously clean tasting spirits and feel right at home in our family-friendly environment. Mossy's Mobile Spirits is offering mobile bar service for weddings and large events. So enjoy some pizza and raise a glass here at Mossy Ledge Spirits. Looking to buy your first RV? Harvey RV and Marine offers a free starter kit with every RV and camper they sell. All the necessities to get you started and a complete orientation on all the features of your new RV. With over 150 years of combined experience outfitting RVs with the most trusted brands, hundreds to choose from, all backed by our certified technicians. Our no-pressure sales team is ready to help. So come see why our business is built on repeat customers. Harvey RV and Marine, Outer Broadway, Bangor. Oh, that feels so good. What a sweetheart. I'm so lucky. These socks are so soft. And her feet don't smell? These would be perfect for hunting season. Moisture wicking, odor resistant, hypoallergenic, softer than cashmere and warmer than wool. Get your alpaca socks and more at the Blue Alpaca. Feel the difference. Hey babe, can I borrow these socks? You're watching ABC7 Bangor.
Well, the third annual Belfast Ice Festival kicked off today. Visitors can expect to see a variety of amazing ice sculptures all over town. Several downtown restaurants kicked off the three-day event by setting up some ice bars outside. The live ice carving competition will take place tomorrow, and Our Town Belfast Executive Director Amanda Cunningham says the event gets bigger every year. February 24, 2022, Russia invaded Ukraine, beginning the Russian-Ukrainian war. Many assumed the small country of Ukraine would quickly retreat and defeat. However, the Ukrainian people have remained resilient while receiving support from multiple countries worldwide. People were talking how Russia was going to win and win quick. You know, that was uh, some of the early commentary about this. Former Bangor City Councilman Sean Faircloth traveled to Poland back in 2022, a week following the Russian invasion. Faircloth recalls his time at the Poland-Ukraine border, assisting those willing to flee their home in search of safety. We had about a thousand refugees per day coming to the facility provided, where we provided uh, clothing uh, to people who came over the border, mostly women and children, with whatever they could carry. A Russian native currently attending the University of Maine says she fears speaking out openly against Russian President Vladimir Putin. Well, unfortunately, right now, Russian propaganda is working really well on silencing people and silencing people who are mm, supporting Ukraine or saying anything negative towards Putin. So as far as I know, one of the strongest sentences right now uh, that people can get is up to 15 years in prison. And that's for simply calling the war the war. She says Russian state officials have deemed the ongoing war a special military operation. The UMaine student says there are several cultural misconceptions and one is most assumed Russian civilians are in agreement with Putin's actions. Right now, there is such phenomenon as uh, or guilty Russian, which is um, something that many Russian people experience. Overall, she says she wants to focus on what's most important while standing in support of Ukraine. Uh, goal number one is to survive. And right now, the focus should obviously be on Ukraine and Ukrainian people. AJ Douglas, ABC7 and Fox 22 News. Alrighty, well, tourney, 20, tourney 2023, excuse me, enters its final days as teams are vying for regional final bids. Our Tyler Cruz is live from the Cross Insurance Center after the break, and he'll get you ready for tonight's slate of games. Stay with us. Time for down in the crowd to go to work. Y'all gotta sniff this stuff. Whoop, whoop. Mm. Smells great, Downey. <laughs> Cold as sex. Downy on You gotta sniff it to believe it. This November, you'll vote on a costly scheme to radically change Maine's electric grid. Pine Tree Power would create a quasi governmental owned utility. It puts partisan politicians in charge of electricity and will cost Mainers $13.5 billion. It will mean higher electric bills, and proponents have no plan to improve reliability or service. Vote no on the costly electric scheme. It's a bad idea for Maine. With AAA insurance, by bundling our home and auto policies, we saved over $450. And we were shocked at the savings. When we switched to AAA auto insurance and bundled our policies, we were able to save over $400 every year. Switch to AAA insurance today, and you could save an average of $483 on auto insurance. Compare that to State Farm, GEICO, even Allstate. Call now for your free AAA full picture quote to find out how much you could save. Well, my passion is hang gliding. I've been doing it for over 30 years, and it's like flying. I mean, it's like everything you always dreamed about. AAA insurance helps us save more. And do more. The savings from AAA insurance has allowed me to pursue my passion of making jewelry. It's great to have a little bit of extra cash to do something that you love. To find out how much you could save by switching to AAA Insurance, call 866-460-1310 for your free AAA full picture quote today. You'll be glad you did. Good luck, Nokomis Warriors and Dexter Tigers in the tournament from Berg Activewear. Best of wishes, Nokomis boys and girls teams in the basketball tournament from Comfort Shoes and more. Good luck, Dexter Tigers, and all area teams in the tournament from REMAX Infinity. 
Max Pizza in Holden is not just a restaurant that serves delicious food and pizza. They also have an adjacent party and event room. Consider having your birthday or office party at Pat's Pizza. They have indoor golf, a pro shop, and a beautiful nine-hole golf course. Pat's Pizza, Holden. We know your life is busy. You have a lot to do. And like you, the news doesn't stop. So when you are ready for us, we'll be ready for you. WVII.com. Welcome in to Fast Break Tournament Edition, brought to you by Dorsey Furniture and Coastal Auto Parts, your local Napa Auto Parts team. Welcome back in to the Cross Insurance Center. Tyler Cruz live here with another day of basketball for you. We have six games today from the Cross Insurance, uh, from the Cross Insurance Center and Augusta, all of those coming your way tonight. Two of those have completed. Both of them see North Girls semifinals. Before we get to those highlights, let's get to those brackets. The games are number two, Penobscot Valley taking on number three, Hodgden, the two and three seeds respectively, and then Dexter and Central, the one and four. So it's been all chalk so far. Let's go to the games and let's see if it stays that way. Penobscot Valley and Hodgden both trying to advance to that Class C North regional finals. Both have had terrific seasons to date. First quarter, Kaya Loring gets it into Ellie Austin. She gets the hook shot to go with the left. Great move right there from the sophomore. And then it's the Hawks. Anna Oliver fires the bounce pass over to Sadie Thompson. And once she handles it, she gets a hand on it, fires it, and it gets it to go from three. To the end of the first now, Loring into her sister Holly. She's going to get it to go on the inside. Penobscot Valley led by 11 at the half. Fourth quarter, Hawks trying to mount a comeback. Megan Peters gets inside. She would get it to go. They come out in the press, but the Howlers break that right away. Holly Loring gets that out to Lila Cummings. She gets it to go, and the Howlers roll to a 42-27 victory. It's awesome. We got heartbroken in the Northern Mains last year. I think we're going to want it even more. As for our defense, we all just had to play together, communicate. I mean... Last game we didn't play as a team so much, but this game we really turned it on together and wanted it for each other. Now to the other Class C semifinal game, top-seeded Dexter going up against the fourth-ranked Central Red Devils. Central, they came out on fire out of the gates in this one in the first quarter behind the hot hand of Izzy Allen. Nice move here for two in the lane through the fall. The Devils were up by 11 after the first quarter, but the Tigers would step it up in the second. Here's Callie Goodrow, beautiful hesitation move. That gets her inside for two. And then again in the third quarter, here she is, Dexter. They would lead by four points going into the four, 38-34. That lead would stretch to double digits, but with about a minute left in the game, Central would storm back. This Izzy Allen triple makes it a three-point game for the Tigers. They would connect from the free throw line. That would seal the deal for the top seed. They go on to win 56 to 51. Yeah, we really wanted to win, so um, <laughs> we, uh, we were in our heads in the first half, so we had to come back, slow it down, mentally um, get things going on the court physically. So. So that is our Class C Finals matchup for the girls. Number one, Dexter versus number two, Penobscot Valley. Both of those teams finished the regular season 17 and one. Dexter's first and only loss came at the hands of Penobscot Valley. Penobscot Valley, their only loss, guess it, came at the hands of Dexter. Seats are kind of starting to fill in here. The next game tips off at 7 p.m. That again is going to be Dexter. This will be the boys. They are taking on Fort Kent and the Class C boys semifinals looking to get to that regional finals game. That is the three and the two right there. Ryan Sudall is down in Augusta for the Class A North finals. Gardner and Lawrence, the girls, Brewer and Skowhegan, the boys. And that one, we will have all of these highlights for you on Fast Break tonight at 10 and Fast Break Extended at 11. That's it for me from the cross. Here's your full five-day forecast. Hey, Tyler, thank you. Your full weather is brought by Varney Ford, the nice car and truck people. And looking outside today, lots of snow earlier today gave way to some cloud cover and then some partly cloudy skies. We'll get the clouds out of here tonight. You know what that means, right? A fresh snowpack in place along with radiational cooling. The clear skies will give us low temperatures down near zero tonight. But it'll be cold tonight, but recover nicely across our region tomorrow. But then looking downstream, there's more stuff up here. In fact, our next weather system has eyes on us for later Sunday. That's this system here across the Midwest. 
And then behind that, another system there. That's the one for Tuesday or so. And that one could bring us a pretty good snowfall across the region then. Until then, though, a nice day tomorrow. A nice day for most of Sunday, followed by some increasing clouds and some light snow showers Sunday night. Let's walk you through it. So tonight looking at mostly clear skies. And again, that's going to give us some really cold temperatures tonight down near zero, if not near five degrees below zero tonight, with feel like temperatures near 20 degrees below zero this evening with that gusty northwest wind. But then lots of clear skies tomorrow. Don't forget your sunglasses tomorrow. Uh, here's tomorrow morning looking pretty good. Tomorrow evening, same story. And then increasing clouds tomorrow night. And there could be a couple flurries around, most likely not. Those should hold off until Sunday or so as we get our next weather system in here later on Sunday into Monday with some snow showers then. Until then, they're looking pretty good. So here's that snow on Sunday, 4 o'clock or so. Light snow developing. This will not be a big deal. Probably another 2 to 4 inch snowfall later Sunday into Monday. And then another system getting in here probably Tuesday into Wednesday of next week. So adding it all up here, uh, let's take us through Saturday into Sunday. We're talking another widespread 1 to 2, maybe a 3 inch snowfall across our region. We've been through heavier, of course, but again, it'll definitely slow us down. All right, here we go. It's also the wind though, right? So the wind out there today gusting on the north near 25 miles per hour, blowing in, drifting the snow around the light, fluffy snow. You sneeze on it, right? And it kind of disperses. Uh, that's the case out there tonight. These will begin to die down tomorrow, though, but it is reducing visibility across the region now with that blowing and drifting snow. So overall, take it easy out there tonight with that blowing and drifting snow across our region. And the advisories are up. A gale warning here for increased wave heights tonight. And then this is a freeze or really a wind chill advisory there. Uh, yeah, feel like temperatures in this region are approaching 25 degrees below zero tonight. The rest of us, not as cold, but still cold, right? With actual air temperatures down below zero and air temperatures feeling like maybe 20 degrees below zero tonight. So after we did this today, 17 here in Bangor, 14 Millinock at 18 Bar Harbor. It's cold. These are below average temperatures. We're going to work on that, though, as warmer temperatures are on the way. As right now, we're in the cold stuff across our region. That's been rare this winter. This will begin to pull out of here, though, beginning as soon as tomorrow. For tonight, though, lots of clear skies. It's cold. Low temperatures down near 5 below, but feel like temperatures approaching 20 below tonight for tomorrow. All right, increasing clouds. High temperatures back up near 20 with a northwest breeze around 5 to 10. And then looking ahead, your five-day forecast shows a story, right? 18 tomorrow, 24, some light snow on Sunday. Monday, we're quiet, 27. There's that next system on Tuesday. Potentially heavy snow on Tuesday, the high temperature of 29. Beth and Peter. All righty, thanks so much, Jeff. Yeah, glad to see that warm up after tomorrow. Indeed. All right, well, more to come after the break. Stay with us. Tonight's stock report is brought to you by Triple S Tax Shop, 315 Hamden Road, Carmel. Come stop by for quality clothing and equestrian gear. When you're ready to tackle your next building project, depend on the knowledge and experience of Hammond Lumber Company. Hammond's Home Planning Center will turn your ideas into accurate conceptual drawings and 3D visualization is available. Your Hammond sales rep will prepare a materials list and cost estimate. And when you buy all of your materials from them, Hammond will refund all of your design fees. Hammond can deliver your order from any of their 22 locations across Maine and New Hampshire. Hammond Lumber Company, your building project partner since 1953. Hey, May. How are you? Yes, you. How are you really? It's a question we rarely ask ourselves. But to Northern Light Health, how you are means a lot. So we're out here asking and encouraging you to ask the people in your life, starting with yourself. So ask away. Then connect with us at northernlighthealth.org slash how are you. I'm 82 years old and I have collapsed arches, which means the first thing that hits the ground is the bone and my, my arch. 
I came to Comfort Shoes four years ago because I couldn't walk without pain. And she spent so much time on my feet getting the right shoe, and we finally found the right pair. Once you made these orthotics for me, I have no pain. These are so comfortable. I have no discomfort. I feel like I could go running. And I thank you and Comfort Shoes for that. Living in Maine means long, cold winters and hot, humid summers. Whatever the weather, Bangor Heat Pumps is your solution. Open 24-7, Bangor Heat Pumps takes care of you at home or at work. We operate statewide and service all brands and models. Understanding moving can be stressful. We will help move any units you may have. We offer a veterans discount in our home with a capeless hero discount. Visit us online at bangorheatpumpsllc.com or call or text us at 307-7746. Bangor Heat Pumps. Tonight, after the president's historic week on the global stage and so much to manage in the U.S., David Muir's exclusive one-on-one -on -one with President Biden. More Americans turn to the most watched program on television. World News Tonight with David Muir. Well, here we are Friday, and I have to just give a shout out to, to Tyler and Ryan for the stellar hard work they've been doing all week covering all of these games the entire tournament yeah bar none tip-top coverage it's been amazing we've had yeah. uh, so much action going on and so for them to boil that all down for us in yeah. a way that's easy to digest uh, we're very thankful to them they're doing great all yep. right folks that's all for us good night good night everyone